want to introduce you to Gringlish, a creative way to learn Greek. For the beginning Greek student, the challenge of memorizing dozens of unfamiliar prefixes and suffixes, which make up the verb system, poses major problems, especially as they are being learned devoid of meaning. The objective of Gringlish is to help Greek students to learn the forms of the verb without forcing them to learn the paradigms. In other words, we are looking for a much more natural way of gaining mastery of the various forms of the Greek verb. What is Gringlish? Gringlish, simply stated, is a new language. It's a strange merger of Greek and English. And with a little bit of practice, you'll find that it is as simple as it is humorous. Essentially, what we are going to do is that we are going to use English verb stems and attach Greek prefixes and suffixes to them. This might sound a little bit strange, but bear with me. It really works. Here's a simple Greek verb. Lelukamen. The stem of the verb is lu. Anyone who's done Greek studies knows that this is the verb everyone uses to learn the paradigms of the Greek verb. The stem is lu. What we've done is add the prefixes and suffixes that turn lu into a perfect active indicative first person plural form. So if you look with me, you can see we've added the prefix le. This consists of the first letter of the stem, the L in this case, together with the letter E, epsilon in Greek. We've then added the suffix ka, which is the marker of the perfect tense, and we've added men, which is the standard indicator that this is a first person plural form, a we. So when we put it together, we get le lukamen, which means we have loosed. Now we can do exactly the same thing using any stem. We can take the stem of any Greek word, not exactly any, but most Greek words, and make the same changes. But here's the amazing thing that Gringlish teaches us. We can practice this by using English stems. For instance, we can use the stem love. Love ends in the vowel E, so we would treat it as if it were a contract verb ending in epsilon. So our stem, in fact, becomes love. And all we do to form the perfect active indicative of love is we add the prefix le. Remember, it's the first letter of the word's stem, plus e, so le. And we add ka and men. So we put this together, we're going to get le lave common. Le lave common. Le lave common in Gringlish means we have loved. Le lave common. We can do the same thing to other English stems. Let's use sin to form the perfect active indicative first person plural of sin. We would form se sin common. Se sin common. Simple, right? Let's do a couple more. We are looking here, still at the stem lu. This is the aorist active imperative second person singular. It's the command form. We've got the stem lu plus the marker of the aorist tense, the sigma, the s, and the ending on. So the aorist active imperative second person singular for lu is luson. Luson. Guess what? Yes, laveson. Laveson would be the command love. Laveson, the Lord your God. And here is sin as an aorist active imperative, second person singular. It becomes sinson. Sinson. So, why Gringlish? If you want to learn Greek, you have to master the verb forms some 500 of them. Now the fact is that trying to memorize them is ridiculously difficult. Few can remember 500 forms of Luo well enough to draw out that information at will and use it correctly. The key to mastering a form is to use it a hundred times a day. Do that and you don't have to try to remember it. You won't be able to forget it even if you try. 
But when you start learning Greek, you don't have enough vocabulary to form hundreds of words yourself. And you don't speak the language, so you're not being put under any pressure to make up new forms based on what you know. Well, that's where Gringlish comes in. You already know numerous English verbs, and you use them thousands of times a day. So all the tools are there. You can use the extensive English vocabulary that you have at your command to form dozens of Gringlish verbs. It'll be as easy as one, two, three. And in doing so, you will learn the forms of the Greek verbs in a way that's hard to forget, not hard to remember. Soon you will have all the forms of the Greek verb at your command, and you won't even have to think about them. They'll come very naturally and very simply. How does Gringlish work? The method is simple, frightfully simple. First, take the present tense stem of the English verb. If you're working with a verb like gave or have given or giving, revert to the present tense stem of the English verb, which in this case would be give. And then simply add the inflectional elements that you would to a Greek verb stem. And voila! You have a Gringlish verb. Simple as that. Gringlish is frightfully simple, but it's also a very powerful tool for mastering the Greek verb. Why don't you join me for the next presentation in this series where I'm going to take a short passage of scripture and translate it into Gringlish so that you can see how this technique works.